this is the product that I was using for my face wash. And every time I use it, it doesn't feel great. It has a lot of bad stuff. Know what's in your products, get the right stuff. This also contains charcoal, by the way. And here's me thinking it was good. So we live and learn. And hopefully you're going to check your cabinet and see what's in your cabinet as well. See what, what's right, what's wrong. Chuck away the stuff that shouldn't belong there um, and get some good stuff. Hi guys, Dr. D here. You know, I was walking through the shopping center the other day and I just realized there's so many products, cosmetic stuff that's there. How do you know which is the right one to go for? Now, if you're looking at just from a normal consumer's point of view, you're looking to see how, you know, what's the reviews like? What kind of things is it going to do for me? Is it going to make my skin look more fuller? Is it going to help with my pores? You know, there's so many different things that these products can actually help with. But the thing is, they also have so many other ingredients in there and we never stop to look what's in there. So even famous brands, right? So I raided my wife's cabinet. So we've got uh, this one here. You've got uh, Estee Lauder stuff and then you've got another one, which is over here. So look, there's a whole heap of different things. And I looked at them. I actually sat there and I read through what's on there and I checked it out, cross-referenced it with stuff, with studies and things that are out there. Um, and so I've done all the hard work so you don't have to. I've looked at other companies which say that they're really good for eye care and skin as well. And so I'll compile that information. I'll brought that to you. So there's 10 different ingredients that you want to be mindful of. All right. So we're going to actually work through them step by step. I've got my computer behind me, so I'm going to be reading some notes as we go, uh, but it gives you what you need. So the first one that we wanted to talk about is BAK. I did a video about this already uh, previously, but BAK stands for benzalkonium chloride. Benzalkonium chloride is a preservative, and what you'll find is a lot of these things on here are preservatives, and they're found in many eye drops eyeliners, mascaras, makeup removers, and face washes. In particular, this BAK. Now, the concern here is BAK is toxic to the eye surface because it actually stops the oils from actually coming out of your eyes properly. So if we break it down really easily, in the normal tear film, we have three things. We have oil, we have water, and we have mucus. So what BAK is doing is damaging the thing that creates the oil and it's also damaging the thing that creates the mucus. And the only thing that's left is the water. And that's not going to last. That's just going to evaporate straight like that. Normally, on average, the tears should last on the eye for about five to seven seconds. If we've got less than that, then that's classed more in the dry eye space. So the other thing that I found about BAK was that it's actually bad for glaucoma patients. There's research out there to say that the BAK gets absorbed through the front of the eye and it goes straight into what we call the trabecular meshwork. That trabecular meshwork, unfortunately, is very important. It's a meshwork which allows the fluid to drain through it. So imagine you've got like a sieve and fluid is draining through those gaps. If they're blocked, which is what happens in BAK, then the pressure increases in the eye. So that's not a good thing for glaucoma patients. There's another ingredient here now, which we'll quickly talk about, which is chlorphenicin. Now, chlorphenicin is, again, bad for a similar reason. Chlorphenicin creates a negative effect on those meibomian glands. We're going to be talking a little bit about gland, meibomian glands in this video. So just try and remember, meibomian glands are the things where the oils come out from. You see, different countries have different rules. America has a different rule. Australia will have a different rule. Japan will have a different rule. And in this case, Japan has actually restricted the use of chlorphenicin in its country. So in certain quantities and concentrations, it's okay, but not allowed in higher concentrations. And one of the main reasons for that is because it's known as well to be a mild irritant. So BAK can irritate your eyes and so can chlorphenicin. If I was to expand a little bit on the BAK, uh, BAK even at low levels, has been known to be not good for the eyes. So just be mindful, anything with BAK in, stay away from it. And chlorphenicin also is uh, bad for the meibomian glands. There are so many chemicals that are put into products that we're not aware of. So this one that I want to talk about is formaldehyde. 
Formaldehyde, otherwise known as quaternium-15, that's how you might see it on the boxes and stuff like that of your product. They have many side effects, unfortunately, formaldehyde. There's also a different component to this, which is called hydroxymethylglycinate. Now, hydroxymethylglycinate is a product which, when combines with water, actually then causes it to break down into formaldehyde. So you can think of them as quite similar. And so they'll have a similar effect. Now, for those of you who can't remember, if you think back to those days when you're at school and you've got um, those jars and they put in, you know, unfortunately dead animals and those animals are kept in a liquid. And that liquid is formaldehyde. So that formaldehyde is a very, very strong preservative, especially in high concentrations. That's what happens it preserves things for a long long time but that also can't be good for you right so looking into this formaldehyde is a preservative which we use commonly in the beauty and skincare area it's known to kill meibomian glands and epithelial cells and so that actually promotes meibomian gland dysfunction which means if the meibomian glands are dying and the epithelial cells on the front of the eye are dying, much like the BAK, then how are the oils going to be produced? How are they going to lubricate the eye? And unfortunately, formaldehyde is one of the leading causes of dry eyes. Uh, there's even a high risk of formaldehyde actually on your skin. So if you're using products with that in on your skin or around the eyes, don't forget the skin around the eyes is really sensitive. If you're using products around there, you're going to get a higher chance of allergic reactions taking place so especially around that delicate lower part of the eye right there and just around the eye at the top be very very mindful of that area this is a product that is completely banned in japan just so you're aware they do not want this over there in their products formaldehyde is actually seen as carcinogenic which means it can cause cancer especially if you're breathing it in Avoid breathing it in and avoid using it on your skin. There's no science to say or no proof that I've seen to say that using it on your skin can cause skin cancer. However, we know for a fact that if you breathe it in, that's unfortunately something that does happen in a higher volume of people. So the next thing is actually something that blows my mind because there's so many of the younger generation actually doing this right now and they think it's safe, but it's not. E-cigarettes, smoking e-cigarettes causes an increase in formaldehyde production and that's something that we're inhaling and we know already that formaldehyde is a carcinogenic substance to explain what happens propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin they combine together and they create free radicals and also something called volatile carbonyls so what this means is the components that are created as a result of the reaction of those chemicals as it goes into your body it's actually taking away all the good stuff and as it takes it then you're left with the stuff that is aging. It's an aging process that takes place in the cells because that stuff that keeps the cells strong is being taken away. E-cigarettes create formaldehyde. Be really mindful of that. The other thing that also happens with formaldehyde is it increases surface inflammation. So on that surface of the eye, you get inflammation there and um, conjunctival cells start to die. So on that white part of the eye, you can see that there's a thin skin which layers that. The cells on there start to die and that's that area where goblet cells are which create mucus again to help stick everything onto the eye at the end of all this it just leads to unfortunately dry eyes um, an increase in inflammation irritation itchiness there's so many bad things that happen from this eye cosmetics is something that has been overlooked for such a long time there are many different ingredients that go into all these different things and remember even if they have a good brand like a stay lauder you know you just don't know what's in there until you start reading what's on the back the next thing here is such a common thing to find in in these kind of products and that is parabens parabens um, mostly found in cosmetics lotions deodorants uh, and they've been associated with abnormal hormone function and also breast cancer you'll be really mindful of that they act as a preservative, parabens do, they act as a preservative. Uh, two main ones which are culprits, methylparaben and ethylparaben. 
So methyl paraben and ethyl paraben also affect the eyes, similar to how uh, BAK does, which is it causes issues with the meibomium glands again, uh, and it's toxic to the ocular surface in this scenario. Unfortunately, they also uh, induce cell death. Uh, so the cells on the front of the eye break down and then they die. But parabens are safe in low concentrations. In high concentrations, they're not safe. So again, just double check. And if you have a look to see the ingredients list, just check to see if parabens are on there. Another common one you're going to find is phenoxyethanol. Phenoxyethanol is in so many products. You can actually just walk down the aisle in a supermarket and on the left and on the right, you're going to see just heaps and heaps of these products. Soaps, cosmetics, perfumes, eyeshadow, blush, hair color, lip balm, uh, lotion, moisturizer, nail polish, baby wipes. A lot of them contain phenox. Phenoxyethanol is restricted in Japan. It's not allowed there. There was a case that was proven uh, in 2008. They created a nipple cream which babies ingested and they got very unwell. You know, they got vomiting, diarrhea, they had depressed nervous system, uh, they lost their appetite, they exhibited limpness, they couldn't wake up properly. And it created a huge issue in 2008. And so all of these products had to be recalled back by that company. Now, if you combine paraben with phenoxyethanol, unfortunately, that is a bad combination. That can cause a massive reaction, um, anaphylaxis. It can cause uh, problems with your breathing, could cause problems with my like, skin conditions. So that's something you really want to be mindful of there. Uh, you'll find it on, on boxes uh, and they'll be labeled as uh, phenoxyethanol, 2-phenoxyethanol, uh, uh, uxyl, K400, PHE. Um, but that is in this product here, unfortunately, as well in the Swiss one. That's uh, yeah, it's it's in so many products. You know, you just got. I don't know the quantity. I don't know the quantity. I don't know the percentage of what's in here. Uh, but I think they need to make that more readily available. You know, like uh, they should say what the safe levels are, what the unsafe levels are. I think that would really help with visibility and clarity in what we're purchasing. Now, with so many chemicals available in so many products. Retinol is something that's been flagged up as one of the leading ones in the industry. It's something which is linked with vitamin A, and that's been known to actually be good for the skin, like repairing damage caused by UVB uh, in areas of the face and, and body. So it has benefits. However, there's also things that are not so great with that. One of the retinols is called retinoic acid, and unfortunately that has been linked to cell death. So if you're using that cream, then it can actually also have a negative effect on your cell. While in some cases we're being told that it can repair it and people have seen good re responses from that. In some research, it's shown that it can lead to cell death as well. So retinol palmitate is the second thing that if you apply it on your skin or on your face there and you step out into the sun, that UV light, which comes and lands on there, causes free radicals to be formed. And free radicals, we know, are scavengers. It's not good for the cells. So that damages the DNA. So you just have to be really, really mindful of that. Also, this retinol palmitate, it's very common in products, but it can cause skin sensitivity and it can cause dermatitis. So that itchy skin. So just be mindful of that if you're already somebody who has sensitivity or sensitive skin. I don't know about you guys, but I've used tea tree products a lot in the past and without realizing the effects of it. And every time I'd use the tea tree uh, face wash or an oil, uh, it'd feel great. It'd feel great. And so I continued using it. But then I tried a product which contained the tea tree oil to help clean my eyelashes. Now, terpenin 4 ol terpenin 4 ol is what we find in uh, tea tree oil. It's the main component that's in there. And it's found in stuff like eye creams, uh, anti-aging creams, face cleansers face moisturizers, and lid wipes, you know, uh, to help get rid of certain conditions like um, demodex mites or uh, if someone's got a, a chalazion or a sty, uh, meibomium gland dysfunction it's sometimes been used for, and blepharitis. So these are just some things that people use this product for. And I tried it to, to have a go to just see what, it, what it's like. But even then, I found that I was sensitive to this terpenin 4 ol just felt my eyes were stinging or burning after I used it. So I don't know how many of you have tried it or if this has happened to you, but you just got to be, you know, just mindful that terpenin 4 has been proven to have a couple of issues. 
uh, one of which is it's found to be toxic uh, in human meibomium gland epithelial cells. So terpenin 4 ol also known as T4O, if you're using this product, just be mindful to get rid of blepharitis or whatever condition you've got. If you try and wipe your bottom eyelid margin and you're getting that pink edge, that's not a good thing. That's actually proven to actually damage your eyes, uh, even at the lowest concentration level. So we don't want to destroy those meibomium glands. Keep them healthy, keep them safe, keep that T4O away from that area as much as you can. The other thing as well is if you're using T4O products, so again, tea tree oil every day and high concentration, that's been shown to actually be damaging for your skin as well. So we're using these face cleansers, face moisturizers, it's okay, but you don't want to use it every single day. You just got to be aware that that can actually cause skin sensitivity, it can cause damage to your oil glands as well. You know, I use a product which has carbon black in there. And I didn't know that it was a bad thing until I started doing my research. So that's going to go straight in the bin. Now, carbon black is actually derived from incomplete combustion of heavy petroleum products. So if you're burning a lot of fuel, like petroleum products, stuff that's left is what they make these products from. And then they sell it to you, telling you it's a good thing. That's where you get coal tar, you get ethylene cracking tar, you get all these various really toxic substances. And they're putting that into a, a container for us to use for our face and for our, around our eyes. And they also make mascara out of that. They make eyeliner, they make lipstick. That's where the black color comes from. So they're using that stuff to put into these products and we're applying it on our face. There's no surprise. It can lead to skin irritations, hypersensitivity, skin cancers, uh, and for the eyes, it blocks the, the ductual. So, you know, if you're putting eyeliner on the waterline, that pink rim, if you're putting eyeliner on there, that blocks up, that physically blocks up the holes where the oils are supposed to be coming from. So if it's blocking those holes, you're gonna get dry eyes. Avoid it as much as possible. They've also found that Inhalation, I mean breathing in a lot of this carbon black, it actually leads to lung disease and cancers of the lungs and various parts of the body. So this is proven. Everything I'm saying right now is proven in, in, in research papers. Carbon black is actually one of the worst things that I've come across for eye makeup. If you're doing your research and want to know a little bit more about carbon black, uh, in particular, like the, the commercial stuff that's being made, it has organic contaminants in there called PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that actually go in there. And that has already been identified as human carcinogens. So you've got to be really mindful of that one. If you've already got proof to say that it's carcinogenic, pay attention, wake up. Uh, including myself. I mean, for me, I didn't even know that it was in my product, but that's definitely going to go in the bin now. Uh, this, see, PAHs, unfortunately, are also known to affect reproductive systems and also developmental toxicity for young ones. Again, carbon black, not a good thing. Make sure it's not in your cosmetics. We all know how important blinking is, right? So it's no surprise to say that when people do Botox and they inject Botox into certain areas of their face, that the eye is unable to close properly. So you people can't blink as easy. In fact, they'll report that when they blink, they feel the tightness of their skin. So from a cosmetic point of view, great. However, with that reduction of blinking, that is not good. Argyroline or acetylhexapeptide 3, otherwise known, actually reduces how much we can blink because what it does, it's, it stops those muscles from contracting to stop those crow's feet or whatever kind of lines, wrinkles uh, for them to show up. There is a problem though, because if we don't blink, if we're not getting that right contraction around the eyelid, then your oil glands are not squeezing enough to release those oils. So if we blink once every three seconds, which is what we normally do, that's uh, in one minute, that's 20 times, the eyelid moves about one centimeter, two centimeters every time. So one centimeter down, one centimeter back up, if you do the math, it works out as 
330 meters of moving every single day, which is the height of the Eiffel Tower, or if you're in Australia, the height of the Eureka Skydeck building in Melbourne. So there's a huge amount of movement that takes place. And to do that, it's easier for the eyelid if there is no friction between the two surfaces. So if this is your eye and this is the eyelid rubbing, we don't want any friction. We want it to be lubricated. So blinking properly, regularly, fully is really important to get those oils to lubricate the eye. If you're using this acetyl hexapeptide 3, which is, like we said, it's a miracle to help people who want to help get rid of those lines, especially around the eyes, it's going to reduce your ability to blink. And when you don't blink and those oils fester and they stay there, they block up. They become like a plug. They get blocked in those holes. So remember, regularly make sure that you are blinking and ideally reduce or don't overuse the amount of this uh, acetyl hexapeptide 3. There are certain chemicals that we just should not have in cosmetics, right? We just should not find in cosmetics. Isopropyl cloprostinate is one of those. That is a really bad one. People use that as a serum and they put it over their eyelashes to increase the length of their eyelashes. When people have glaucoma, they use this prostaglandin analogs to help control their eye pressure. As a side effect of that though, it increases the length of their eyelashes. So some bright sparks realize this and they put it into a cream or into serums and now people apply that directly onto their eyelashes. So there's so many side effects with prostaglandin analogs that we know very well because so many people are on glaucoma medication. So one of those is it makes your skin darker around the eyes. The other one leads to itchy eyes. You can have irritations, red eyes that come as a result of it, flaky skin on the eyelashes themselves. Uh, the iris can actually change color. And one of the worst ones here is that on the back of the eye, the macula at the back of the eye uh, can actually get swollen as well. So it leads to reduction in your vision. You actually start losing your eyesight sometimes. So prostaglandin analogs have side effects. And this isopropyl chloprostinate is one of those. Be mindful of those because we don't want side effects. Side effects are something that's just going to deteriorate your eyes. We're here to increase the longevity of your eyes and increase the vitality. And this isopropyl chloprostinate is certainly not going to help you in that regard. Thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. There's so much information I know. So I'm going to put it down in the description below. So um, go and just have a look down there for it. And also, if you found this really of value, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe if I've earned it. Uh, that would help the channel so much. Um, now, just to add as well, what I just did is I went to go check. This is the product that I was using for my face wash. And every time I use it, it doesn't feel great. So this is a new one that I was just trying. Now, and I just wanted to read the ingredients that was on the back. It's so tiny. But when I read it, it has stuff like... Uh, ethanol, it has the parabens, it has limonene, which is another bad one, sodium hydroxide, uh, it has uh, that polyquaternium in there as well. It has a lot of bad stuff. You've got to pay attention to what's in your products. And that's why I think this has become a bit of a mission for me now, to just educate people. Know what's in your products, get the right stuff. This also contains charcoal, by the way. And Here's me thinking it was good. So we live and learn. And hopefully you're going to check your cabinet and see what's in your cabinet as well. See what, what's right, what's wrong. Chuck away the stuff that shouldn't belong there um, and get some good stuff. Alrighty, all the best.